Hey, hello, everybody. Welcome again to another edition of the Hot Seat Interview. I am your host, Leo Brady, film critic for amovieguy.com. And I'm excited to be here today with a big upcoming star as a director, a writer. I mean, her new film is something that I can't wait for the rest of the world to see. She's made plenty of short films, award-winning short films prior to this. Uh, but we're excited to be talking today about her new film, Hunting Days. This is director Anik Blanc. Thank you for so much for being with me today. Hello. Thank you for having me. Yeah. So um, I had such a good time with this movie. And I know I'm not supposed to say good time, but this this is like, this is kind of one of those movies where I end up telling everybody like, hey, make sure you see this movie. So, but before we get started, um, I start this interview series by always asking the person who I'm talking to, what is a movie or cinematic moment that made you say, I want to become a director? Oh my God, what a big question. <laughs> it's, it, my answer is silly too. It's like when I was, it started when I was seven years old, there's this uh, French comedy movie. Uh, it's called uh, The King of the Joke. Okay. And like two broke guys uh, trying to be comedians. And I was like, they're having so much fun. That's what I want to do with my life. <laughs> and then I think I, I muted the broke part, you know, I didn't see that. Like, I was just like, they look like they're having fun. And that's what made me want to do film. And then it made me want to watch film. And then I had other uh, very important cinematic experience. But the if you're asking about the first time, it was yeah. that movie. Oh, that's awesome. We get a lot of interesting answers for that question, too. I mean, it's like, I think the most repeated answer has always been Jurassic Park. But, <laughs> also, but, but also, like, there's always something different. I think it's like, kind of, that's why I keep asking it, because it's like the kind of answer that you get says a lot about the person and like where they came from and how they grew up. Um, but like, for you, you've had this strong streak of like three short films in a row. Um, the Color of Your Lips was like an award winner but it's always sort of this process to get to your first feature. So how long has it been coming to get to hunting days? 11 years. Wow. <laughs> wow. 11 years. The first uh, writing grant was like in 2011. So even it's a bit more now, but now it's yeah. moved shut, right? Yeah. But yes, there was a, the, I think the first feature is the longest to write. It, I didn't write it full time for 10 years, of course, but uh, it was a long uh, script process. And also we were doing a lot of um, other films uh, in the meantime to kind of earn a living, right? The first feature, that's also the challenge, right? How to earn yeah. your living, write your first film. So, but yes, it was a long, long way. Yeah, get get getting the funding and everything like that is just like it's such a process. Um, well, and, and an interesting thing in in sort of doing research for you that I read, which I was fascinated by, and I was totally elated to hear, was you said that one of your favorite movie characters was Ellen Ripley. I am a huge Alien fan, so when I when I read that, I was like, okay, this person's speaking my language, but. This movie does, Hunting Days does seem to feel like it has a little bit of alien DNA in it, where it is a singular woman surrounded by men, you know, and and in a position where nobody's listening to her. I mean, would you say that maybe with that was subconscious or is that sort of something that you thought about? No, it's true. I forgot about that. Now you remind me of that. But there was a moment where I watched all the Aliens film and I was like, I thought that sh she was such an example of a woman, but also as a director, I was learning from her. Like she's, as you say, like she has to direct a crew. Everybody has their own agenda. She's like uh, yeah. trying to keep everybody together. But uh, as a character, I think Nina takes uh, from her where she's... Um, this uh, very uh, woman character and even Ellen Ripley at some point, right, has a child, all that. There's this woman part, but she's tough like a man, right? And yeah. she she doesn't uh, get herself imposed and she fights like a man. And she's one of the boys, I think, is right. one thing that is in, in common to being one of the boys, you know? Yeah. Imposing as one. Yeah, well, and it, it's, it's kind of cool, too, because I think one of the best parts about this is your lead actor, Nahima Ricci. I mean, like her performance, unbelievable, 
but to most American viewers, they may not have seen her yet. Uh, can you tell me, you know, what was your first time discovering her? And then how did you land on her giving her this role as the lead? It's, it's a big, uh, uh, undertaking for her. For sure. Yeah. Naima had done already a few features, but uh, what we had seen her, her last uh, marking role was she was a very tomboy girl who was shaving her head and she was a kind of a victim. So when the agent proposed her, we yeah. said no five times. We said, we don't want it here. She can't do this. Wow. We were also looking for someone with sensuality. She did had never shown any. Uh, like we were like, no, there's no way she can pull this together. And then we went to see everybody. We lost a lot of time. And then at the end, I was like, well, we didn't see Laema. Maybe we should try, right? So yeah. I a friend and I was like, would she be interested in doing something like that? And they said, yeah, that's all she want to do. That's what she is. She's not <laughs> like, and I was like, oh, okay. So, and then she she came in, uh, her long hair had, had grown and she had dressed for the part and she started to act. And I was like, oh, I'm such an idiot. So much wasted time. <laughs> just, like, just to not see one person, but we didn't want to, we don't want, as a director, you don't want to hurt, right? So if you know it's not the right person, you don't want to just bring to an audition. Right. So in the end, right. it, was, um, it was her all along. Yeah, I mean, yeah, she's so good. I mean, well, like, and part of this film involves this bachelor party that she's gone to. It includes debauchery, sort of crazy moments that are happening. Uh, tell me, how were you able to get this whole collective group sort of, like, it feels like lived in. It feels like you've spent time with these people for quite a while, but you definitely feel like these actors know have known each other for quite a while so how have you how did you gather everybody and make sure that it felt like this comfortable friendship environment yeah i think it's because uh, i am uh, i i have more a uh, guy bench of guys friends than friends uh girlfriends i do have girlfriends but i also yeah. have strong so I think I'm really used to male dynamics. You know, I'm also one of the boys often. Right. So I think I wrote that from beneath and having, I was really writing each character with one of my guy friends in my head. Yeah. And so they were really felt, you know, like, uh, and the kind of joke this guy does. Because the way I write, like, it's like sometimes that the character speaks to me. It's just like, they sometimes they make me laugh. I'm like writing the scene and then he says that, like, I feel like he does that. Of course, I'm saying it through him, but it feels right. like it's, because I patchwork, uh, usually when I create a character, I will patchwork like two or three of my friends in him and make him exist like that. So it's kind of, he, he lives in my head. Yeah. So I think that kind of makes them very lively. The fact that they're not just one-sided, they kind of all gray side and like it makes them really alive. Yeah. And the, basically in the writing to have them feel, because that's what I, I often notice at some point with my guy friends, uh, more specifically was like the running gags and like finishing each other other sentence and they know what the other one is going to say so that's in the writing something I try to perpetuate that I think creates that feeling that they know each other because they always complete each other's sentence or they always have a, a running gag that you are an outsider to but that like you kind of understand because they're living it so much you know yeah yeah um well and while they're like living it so much and, and it, it makes total sense it's like I always hear like write what you know and it's like I, you know, it always seems, yeah, it, it feels real because it was real at, at certain times, but there, there are scenes in this, this camping getaway that they have bachelor party that involve, you know, fire, <laughs> um, you know, uh, guns going off, things of that nature. Talk about like shooting those scenes. I mean, like, obviously, yes, it's like pyrotechnics and a lot of special effects are things that come into play. But like, I assume I know that like on set for days like that can be the most nerve wracking, the scariest, you know, you have to be safe. Well, tell me about like shooting those moments that had to be either the best or the worst. <laughs> the most stressful time of my life you have to yeah. know too that i'm i'm a producer as well on the movie yeah. i did in my company with my partner maria so yeah. like i feel very responsible about what goes on right and maria yeah. and are always a bit scared um we had a very good stunt coordinator for us it was really important to be uh, with someone very good but very safe because of course there's in in those traits there's like different kind of uh, characters and yeah. to listen 
night. So that was yeah. that. But I was so scared and we had very little time to shoot. And I was like, how are we going to make that day up? And this is a very long scene. And in the end, it was fun when it started to happen. It was actually <laughs> magical. And yeah. the actor, like there's the, the, the same actor goes to a bit of a slapping before uh, this fire scene. Yeah. And I, the slapping seemed like it wasn't, but he hated that. And it was like, it hurts. Like even if they, it, the coordinator was helping them not to hurt each other, like it was just, it was really irritating him. And then we did this fire shot with him and he was like, I want to do it again and again. And he just wanted to do it again. He loved it, you know, like wow. it's, it's, it's true that that's one of the moments where like, I do an amazing job. I can yeah. set people on fire. Like, <laughs> right. Right. Well, and it's like, yeah, when it goes perfectly and it's, you know, everybody's taking care, that's that's the magic of movies, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Now we were in a, in a safe place. That's what was good. And that's how we could have fun with it. But before it started, I thought I was going to die. But in yeah. the end, it was fun. For sure. For sure. Um, so I did want to ask you, too, about the themes here. I mean, like the themes at hand, you know, both Naima's character, uh, Nobi's character, they, they, they're kind of these two characters that are rescued, right? Like it feels like there are, you know, it, it's a woman and a black man and, and they're being brought in. Was there a bit of like subtext for you there of like sort of showing gender dynamics, you know, racial dynamics, things of that, that sort of come out when you are the outsider brought into this collective group, right? There, it's kind of... I don't want to say it's, you know, like um, there, you know, it there, it becomes this new universe for them, right? It's not what they're used to. Now, all of a sudden, they're, they're in a totally different environment. Talk about sort of where that inspiration came from. I mean, that seems to be the themes that are at hand. Exactly. I wanted to to challenge those power dynamics because at first they look like they're the ones that are safe, but then of course they're going to have to regain power, right? Yeah. And because sometimes uh, people will make you think they're saving you when they're actually gaining control on you, right? Or they, they, it's not totally genuine, or if their best interest is in place, then they will put you in a place of danger again. Yeah. So I wanted. To, to put those uh those dynamics where like uh everybody can be powerful and we need to stay powerful and we need to be not scared so i wanted to have a a woman a strong woman and a black man or a, a, um, or a, a stranger a face uh the the uh, well-established white man for me yes. it was it was uh, important to question that dynamic and yeah. to have those people win at the end or to actually have those people destroy this this toxic um, this toxic establishment, I would say. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, like the, the movie that I was trying to think of was kind of like Triangle of Sadness, right? Like the, these, these, these sort of moments where people of status or different, you know, coming from different backgrounds are, are put in the middle of nowhere and how they sort of adapt to each other is always fascinating, is it not? I mean, I think that's ultimately what rises to the top of this film. Exactly, and I wanted to do it. Um, I think we both use the kind of uh, same uh, uh, apparatus of the uh, stereotype. Yeah. Right? Like uh, all my guys are big tough guys. My woman is a sex worker. My right. Uh, my stranger is a uh, doesn't have papers uh, right. so we do use those uh, but then we kind of divert them you know it's not the way that this story is supposed to go that it goes yeah. so we kind of uh, change the stereotype and make it kind of a uh, change itself you know to inspire maybe change is what I wanted to to do through that right uh, yeah so... Yeah, it, it always it always like uh, makes I, I think this is why this is a such a great film is because it puts the audience member, a person to sort of ask those questions of themselves and say, how would I respond? Would I be like that person? Like, I would hope I'm not like this person. Um, awesome. Uh, so tell me a little bit sort of too. I mean, you talked a little bit about earlier about about the first film that you saw that sort of made you say you want to be a director, but like what kind of inspirations have you taken you know from cinema that you want to make i mean 
when I watched this, I was like, I, I can't compare this to a director. I mean, I yes, I just brought up Triangle of Sadness, but it's like, I can't compare this. This feels like an Anik Blanc film. Is that sort of what you want to go for? Or do you have, uh, you know, directors that you love that you're just like, I, I hope I emulate them in a way? I think what makes this film so different is the mix of genre. It, it's yeah. a lot because I mix really dark humor, uh, horror, uh, psychological horror, there's thriller, there's uh, also uh, uh, kind of a, a really intense uh, um, human emotions as well. So yep. like there's more author cinema as well. So like I kind of merge all that together. And I think that's why you you can't say, oh, this is uh, the, the, the director that inspired this. But right. so they are making it's the same way that I told you about my character. I kind of patchwork, right? Because one of the references that was really strong for me was watching again and again Michael Anike film for this in the right. raw end and the and the not happy end. And because that there was something that inspired me that was so raw and tough in the cinema that was there. But I also need to dream. So there was also all the horror psychological, uh, let's say the shining, the Kubrick uh, kind of yeah. putting up this kind of uh, dream kind of mode was also something I patched. So like you kind of make Anneke meet Kubrick right. and then kind of the humor in there, which was probably goes back to that first film I liked a lot. Uh, yeah. but, uh, uh, and like uh, my love of characters. All right. So uh, all that kind of patch works into a, uh, into a movie I was watching a lot shining at the time uh, no I'm not shining shame at the time for like the very great male character interiorization as uh, uh, sexuality uh what else was I watching a lot I was watching a lot of those movies on repeat to kind of just feed myself of those ambience yeah uh, there was this great movie that inspired me a lot uh, um a field in England as well uh, I don't know if you know that movie it's so good yeah uh, no, black all, all shot in a in a field uh, that, for the magical aspect of the movie because there is a magical aspect to the movie right yeah so like so many influences in one yeah yeah I mean um, I've, I've heard a lot of people bring up Haneke a lot with like, like funny games right I mean funny games is a movie that everybody sort of is just fascinated by he you know he breaks fourth wall he does things you know you know he does things like that and uh yeah you get you get a lot the, those those uh, inspirations show. I, I do want to let you know that that's that that works really well. Um, all right, last question. So you are about to have your first feature premiere at South by Southwest. Uh, you know, for audiences to see this, I know that there's probably a bunch of fears rattling around in your head. Uh, have you know? At this point, are you just like it's out of my control? Hopefully, audiences love it, or do you, are you just scared until the final credits roll? I think it's the first feature, as you say. I remember watching my shorts in the in the, in the screening and feeling like that. So I I kind yeah. of feel that moment. But uh, th there's a good reception to the movie, so I try to really uh, hook myself to that. Usually, as you say, what people like about the movie is that it's enjoyable. It goes fast. You're always surprised. Yeah. So I, I kind of try to reassure myself. I'm there with my crew also, my longtime partner and producer, uh, partner in film and producer Maria. There's my actress that's going to be there. My boyfriend is coming. So awesome. I'm trying to kind of book to the people I love and just to... I also hear Austin has a fun audience, which I, I think often is the good thing in a genre festival. The audience is lit there because they want to see the films and they yes. want to enjoy the moment. So I'm, I'm trying to relax by that. But uh, yes, there's a lot of fear going in my head. Well, I, I, I think you are 100% correct. I think the audience is fun and they're going to enjoy this a lot. Uh, Anik Blanc, thank you so much for talking with me today. Congratulations. Um, Hunting Days is going to be premiering Saturday, March 9th at South by Southwest. Congratulations and thanks for talking with me today. Thank you. Yep. Take care.